Hello, I'm Johnny Knoxville, and I'm about to backflip this bike. So what happened immediately before and immediately after that clip? I was trying to backflip a motorcycle and uh, I don't, I can't ride a motorcycle. So the moment before was Travis Pastrana letting out the clutch for me. And, uh, and in my head, I was like, I got this. I totally got it. I can't ride at all. Like two days before I tried to backflip a mini motorcycle and I crashed on the way to the ramp. Actually, I crashed on the way to the ramp on the big motorcycle too the first time. My confidence was pretty high though. Uh, no, uh, like no one else is, no one else really uh, had high hopes for me. That's why I get such good footage, Richard. Well, isn't, the, isn't sort of the point of your stunts is to do them wrong? Th most of the time, but in my head, I had totally had it. And I still think I got it. I still think I can do it. But uh, I, I hit the ramp, luckily. And it was the fourth time I tried it. And I let go of the bike as soon as it goes off the ramp. It goes up about 15 feet in the air and comes back down and the handlebars turn right as they get to my crotch and it broke off a handlebar between my legs. So the point of impact is where? Last night I was feeling around in the shower like I do and I'm the most sore about this far from my uh, anus. You told me that you stood up and you walked to the ambulance on your own two feet. I laid down for a cup for about 10 seconds and then I got up and I, I was in pain but I felt like I was peeing my pants and I was like I, I and I looked and, and it, Every time my heart would beat, blood would go boom, 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 boom. So uh, I was mildly concerned. And yeah, I walked over to the ambulance uh, and I asked the guy when I got over there, because that's not something you want to see. I said, well, is it bad? I know it's bad, but how <laughs> yeah. bad? He goes, well, you know, <laughs> it's bad, but if you have internal bleeding or busted your bladder or something, we got to get you to the hospital. And I was like, that sounds not good. By the way, all right, let's see how full it is at the beginning of the interview. Come on, that's my pee. And uh, we'll see uh, after I drink the rest of this Willie Nelson spring water, the taste that's always on your mind. After I finish this, we'll see how much pee's in there. When you watch a clip like that, do you detach or do you think, oh, this could have been my Steve Irwin moment? I just get mad at myself for not making it. Uh, I'm like, I still got it. I, I can pull that. I just. Because I was asking to look at the footage when I was doing it so I could see what I was doing wrong, but we couldn't get a camera down there. And uh, I, I, still, I still think I can do it. After something like that happens, uh, even for you, is that a life-changing event? I mean, you weren't hurt that badly, mm. but it was near your gonads. Right. So that might make you think twice about, well, <laughs> about telling it next time. N I don't know. Like, uh, I don't know if I'm the right guy to ask because I, I want to just do it. Although uh, my, my, my uh, girlfriend had a pretty good talk with me, uh, so uh, it may have been a life-changing event. <laughs> Who are you talking to? I'm, I'm, I'm more scared of her than I am that uh, backflip. Well, there was a stunt in Jackass 2 that probably Tom and Jerry wouldn't do, and that's the one you get on the rocket. And, mm. and I was, that's, the, that's like the, it's funny, because it goes by really fast, mm. and you could have died. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, if it would have blown up at you, Mm. You would not be sitting here today. No, you got no. Right back on it. No, you, you, you'd have had Chris Kattan. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, yeah, we, that happened. <laughs> Bad because like I walk in it. Here, I get. Wait, no, I don't want to do it. Here, we go over to the light. Dude, oh, see, don't, I'm don't done. let him pee in front I'm of done. my neighbors. When, I, when, when I'm walking, it's so heavy. The pee on my leg is so heavy. It's nothing to brag about. I have a fucking catheter. The bag is fucking big. Going from there to there to there. Beer I can't handle. You had to fit Jackass and what you do into like a comedy lineage, right? I mean, it's it's kind of like you know, like Fight Club meets Buster. It'd Keaton. It'd probably be the you caveman, know? like down here. Well, there was, I saw um, a there was a Buster Keaton homage at the mm, end. Of I, yeah, I, 
I watched a lot of Buster Keaton and a lot of Tom and Jerry before number two. But uh, well, the house falling on you. Yeah, it actually it actually fell on me. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to. N no, the, we were shooting and we rehearsed it, which we never do. You know, uh, we usually rehearse on film. You know, the kids like it that way. We get footage. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had the stunt coordinator, who's a young guy. He, like, it seemed like he just made stunt coordinator, really good guy. But he wanted to be really safe about things as far as that goes. And he's like, whatever you do, just stand in this spot. Whatever happens, don't move. Because this is a 20 foot high steel wall. And if you move, you're done. I'm like, I got it, totally got it. And, and they're like, action. And I'm like, staying still, staying still. And someone yelled, cut prematurely. And I was like, staying still, staying still. I'm gonna get a drink. And I was like, ooh. And luckily, I looked up at the right time and my head went through the window, but the rest of my body. And the whole, the, the whole set fell silent. And I know this from looking at the footage afterwards. The whole set was silent, except for my daughter, who's going, Daddy, what, what are you stupid? And she just runs up and just starts just killing me. And then everyone's like, and then, you know, it worked out fine, but. Uh, like, did your daughter see the footage of the Evil Knievel thing? Um, she's 12 and she didn't see the show, you know, when it first came out. She didn't, I didn't show her stuff where daddy would get hurt or it was naughty. And uh, for number two, uh, it was the first time I ever showed her what daddy actually does. <laughs> You know, she just thinks daddy has all these friends that come over and, and, and drink beer and we shoot pool and wonders kind of what I do for a living and, and now why. Uh, <laughs> so I showed her some of the things and she's just, she's about, she's, she's 12, but she's about 15 years older and wiser than me. So uh, she's an old soul and she just rolls her eyes. How does the idea start to form? Basically, I don't know if they ever get fully comedy. formed, you know. Uh, but like in the, in the, at the inception. I, yeah, I don't, like we, for number two, we had writers meetings and they would, for the first 30 minutes we would toss things around and about minute 31, someone would punch someone and people would start wrestling and, and I don't know how things get accomplished really, honestly. I'm still confused by the success of it all. Like, we didn't even think it could be a TV show. When you're gonna do something that involves firearms, let's say, or a live bull, mm -hmm. immediately before someone shoots you, what is going through your mind? By that point, honestly, it's, uh, oh well, you know, let's, you're, let's you're do it. You're in a it. zen place. Yeah. No, no, I don't know much about that. Uh, I just, uh, I just, what's going through my head is let's go now. Yeah, let's get let's this do over it. with. Let's do it, you know, like, didn't come here just to kiss and eat donuts. One of the topics that I really wanted to discuss with you is fame. Because one day you're an average guy tasering yourself in total anonymity, and the next day you're tasering yourself in front of tens of millions of TV viewers. Yeah. Fame happened to you in a just a super fast way. Mm. Was it intoxicating? Did it change you? Intoxicating or? is a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, the fame part I try not to take too seriously because it's like, what, I, I, I might be famous two more years tops, <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it all changes, who cares? Well, they always say you get five years, but you've had a good eight at this point, so. Oh, a good eight, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like four and a half full bore. But well, what happened? I mean, like, did people around you change? Like, you know, was the famous story of obviously Dave Chappelle saying, everybody around me changed. Mm. When I saw him talking about that on Oprah, he seemed quite sane in an insane situation. So, I mean, <laughs> it's, things were already pretty surreal for you, obviously, just for what you do professionally, but when you add the fame aspect of that, how did your life change? You can always get perspective afterwards and, and justify anything, but it had an effect, you know? I say I don't take it too seriously, but it had an effect. Would have to. You know, Hillbilly from Tennessee suddenly you yeah. know, famous. Uh, I, 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 I never took it too seriously, but it had an effect. So, uh, but what about the people around you? Did they treat you differently? Uh, yeah, but I probably reacted differently a little, you know? Um, 
the, 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 the big thing is like uh, your friends, you have your core friends from your childhood, and then you have friends that, you know, you knew. And your friends that you kind of knew were suddenly tried to be your friends for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you didn't react to that, when you saw that coming, they're like, oh, well, he's changed. Uh, I changed a little, they changed a little. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to brag, fellas, but my uh, pee bag, my pee bladder, I like to call it. <laughs> See, beer, like if it, like the liquor had me down to here, but beer just, you know, it just makes my, uh, my pee pee regular, mm -hmm. you know.